Open the pod bay doors, Hal. It's time for Science! Science. Welcome to Sci Friday on Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert. Joining us in studio, the Skywatch TV science editor, my best friend, my wife, Sharon K. Gilbert. Hi, cutie. Hi, sweetheart. So uh, we had talked about... um, the, the decision by the government of the United Kingdom uh, on my daily updates this week to allow genetic editing on uh, on human embryos. So mm-hmm. kind of covered that. But there's another story that is really top of mind and is um, it's it, top been of declared many websites right now. Yeah, it's been declared a uh, well, a, an, an emergency by the World Health Organization. It has indeed. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me based on the number of countries reporting. Uh, we're talking about the Zika virus. Uh, the number of countries who are reporting uh, infections with it, that uh, the meeting is going to take place in March among the CDC, PAHO, which is a Pan-American health organization, um, uh, the World Health Organization, many other health entities throughout the globe. They're all going to meet, and it wouldn't surprise me if they declare a pandemic. Hmm. Now, the thing that really struck me, and I, I'm not one that, that jumps to <laughs> conspiratorial conclusions no, neither am on, I. on medical issues, Um but I, I'm open to questioning the official story. Right. Uh, and at first I took as given the information that the media was reporting that the Zika virus, which uh, uh, arrived in Brazil in May of last year, right. had spread to almost every state in Brazil by the end of 2015, had resulted in an explosion of birth defects, specifically microcephaly, mm-hmm. children born with, as we talked about last week. But there are some facts that have come out now over the last week that don't seem to line up. Well, they haven't actually come over the last week. It's it's actually data that's there if you go and dig for it. Uh, there's a wonderful resource online called PubMed, and you can go there and type in all sorts of search terms. If you type in microcephaly, you'll bring up a variety of studies that have been done on it. One of them is done by... Um, Uh, an expert in neurology and his team members, and he took a look at microcephaly in the United States. And they state in their study, which is from 2009, that the United States has approximately 25,000 cases of microcephaly in various degrees of that every year. 25,000 a year. 300 million people here. About 350, so 300 to 350, somewhere there. Population of Brazil is 200 million. So it's about two-thirds the population or 60% the population of the United right. States. Right, so you'd expect 17,000, 18,000 cases of microcephaly if indeed we've, we, if it's fair to compare one to another because, of course, populations differ as right. to health care. But one would think that it may even be worse in some of the rural areas of Brazil because they have very poor health care. Right, but you're, you're right about that. If the United States, if those numbers are accurate in the United States... Uh, rate of microcephaly per year is about 25,000. We're talking about 2,000 a month. Brazil's got about 60% of the population. We would expect somewhere around 1,000 to 1,200 per month, which tracks with what they've reported since October. Exactly. So, and, I, and I'm not the only one questioning this. There are other researchers out there who are questioning the numbers. The interesting thing about Brazil is they actually have a law in place that makes it a crime to share data on diseases. Hmm. They can't share the genome of any of the uh, uh, Zika virus that they have uh, uh, tested and sequenced. They can't share that with anybody. They can't really share their microcephaly data. They can't share the results of any of the tests that they've ostensibly run Mm -hmm. on the mothers and the children. Until other researchers throughout the world actually get that data, they can't say anything for sure. We just have to take what Brazil we says. We have to take it on faith. Well, th- this raises a couple questions then, uh, because Brazil had said that, or information from Brazil was that they averaged prior to this outbreak about 150 cases of which microcephaly a year, really which seems really low. low if the United States has got, again, just a third larger mm-hmm. population and. Uh, 25,000 cases of microcephaly a year, you'd Mm -hmm. expect Brazil to have about 1,000 cases a month. You'd think so. Were their numbers prior to October wrong? And the second question is, if the numbers are correct, and they did see an explosion in this particular type of birth defect in the second half of 2015, have they established a link to the Zika virus, or is something else responsible? No, there has been no firm establishment of a relationship between Zika virus infection and microcephaly. Okay. That is still a huge question mark. Okay. And until researchers in the rest of the world get access to these genomes, access to the actual hard data, 
nobody's going to be able to say for yeah. sure. Now, there are some researchers that are really cautious, and others, Michael Osterholm of... Uh, uh, SIDRAP mm -hmm. has gone on record saying he believes there is an epidemic and this is something everybody needs to get out in front of now because he sees it as a, a, a terrible issue. I do too. And in fact, believe it or not, there are those who are calling for the use of DDT mm -hmm. in Brazil to get rid of the mosquito population. Now, let's go to another aspect of this that I get emails on, have been getting for the last two weeks, and you've probably gotten some too. Sure. There was a release, a trial of genetically modified mosquitoes from Oxitec, which is a U, uh, British company. Mm -hmm. Oxitec has figured out a way to modify these mosquitoes with something called gene drive technology. It uses the CRISPR Cas9 technology that we've talked about, and it's also mentioned in the Inhuman documentary. Uh, it's a relatively easy relatively robust way to alter DNA. But in this case, it's a little cassette that's inserted onto a chromosome, a particular gene, on the male mosquito in the egg. Mm -hmm. they, they have these teeny weeny little glass you know, needles that they insert DNA into the mosquito egg and they have a fluorescent tag. So as they, the larvae mature, you can tell they're glowing. <laughs> you can tell which one actually got it. So those that actually got it, they allow to mature into mosquitoes, and they end up with a large population that they can release into a test field. That was tested in 2015 in Brazil. Mm -hmm. It's been tested in a few other areas, and there are those, and I'm not the only one, and these aren't just bloggers. There are some scientists who are questioning whether or not somehow genetically modifying the population of 80s uh, mosquitoes in the area has somehow made it more... A, a more efficient carrier and transmitter of the Zika virus. Mm -hmm. Now, theoretically, these um, mosquitoes aren't supposed to be able to reproduce. No. That, that 95 percent of them are supposed to die. But the question, and this is this is like something out of Jurassic Park, where in the storyline of Jurassic Park, the dinosaurs weren't supposed to be able to reproduce because mm -hmm. they were missing a key uh, lysine, lysine, a key amino acid. Mm -hmm. But they somehow managed to get the lysine out of the environment. These mosquitoes aren't supposed to be able to reproduce except when they come into contact with tetracycline? Well, apparently tetracycline can knock out the change in the gene so that, yes, they can somehow, life finds a way, as uh, Jeff Goldblum's character said. Mm -hmm. uh, tetracycline is, you would think, well, they're not going to go to a drugstore. Nobody's, and right, how they get But it? it's in the environment because if for no other reason than the fact that many cattle producers and other uh, animal producers and farmers are using tetracycline on their animals. Right, right. This is an antibiotic that's supposed to prevent problems. We use it here in the United States. And it's excreted. So it's excre excreted into the the environment, so of course they're picking it up. <laughs> and, and actually, the, this, and humans also are excreted sure, sure. because we use it all the time. And, and in areas where, um, in rural areas of Brazil, where uh, sanitation is not maybe what it is here in most uh, of the United States, uh, it, it would uh, be more likely well, to get course. into the environment. And, and the, the <laughs> tests me. on those uh, genetically modified mosquitoes from Oxitec, which is a spinoff of Oxford University in England, uh, actually began in 2011. In mm -hmm. Brazil. So these modified mosquitoes have been in Brazil for the last four or five years. They have, but what many people watching this may not know is that they're in the United States, too. There's really? a test going on, a trial going on in the Florida Keys right now. Ah. The FDA is taking a look at it, seeing how it impacts the ecology and also how it impacts uh, whether or not it actually works. Mm -hmm. And the FDA is in the process of deciding whether or not they're going to approve the GMO uh, mosquito for use in the United States to get rid of ADs mosquitoes. Hmm. Well... And if those of you who live in, in like, Minnesota or Oregon or, or maybe even... Uh, parts out west in Canada, mm -hmm. you're thinking, well, we don't have 80s mosquitoes here. People like Michael Osterholm and other experts in epidemiology and virology are taking a look at this and saying it wouldn't take much of a genetic shift, either in the mosquito or in the virus, for the Asian tiger mosquito, which is prevalent throughout 30 states in the United States, mm -hmm. all the way up the eastern seaboard into the New York state area. If the Asian tiger can carry it, then many areas yeah. will be inundated with uh, th possibly with this virus if it takes hold here in the United States. Yeah, I, I can. And, and, and even though, let's say 
Turns out microcephaly isn't at all connected. It appears to be a very strong case for Guillain-Barre. Uh, mm. It's an autoimmune disorder that has resulted from Zika virus infection. It can be caused by many other things. Essentially, the immune system is kicked into high gear, starts attacking your own nervous system, and it can cause paralysis and even death. Hmm. Well, th there, there are a number of questions, and I think this is a, an instructive case for us when we are seeing stories in the news, because even though when you read the stories closely, and they, the news articles generally do... Uh, specify that researchers are still exploring the link between the Zika virus and the cases of microcephaly. But the sense that you get from reading the articles, maybe scanning them, not reading them carefully, mm -hmm. is that there's a direct correlation. But we've seen, first of all, that uh, the, the, uh, either the numbers that Brazil was reporting prior to the second half of 2015 were inaccurate, or, and here's the other question that we need to ask, we know that the Zika virus is prevalent in other parts of the world, Africa, Polynesia, and Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. How have their rates of microcephaly changed over the last exactly. half a year? Exactly, and is there some difference in the, the actual genome of the mosquito in Brazil versus the mosquito in other populations? Mm. We, we can't get any of that until Brazil will share, share the their information. data. Uh, one more thing, and I, again, I've gotten emails about this too. There's also a, a theory going around the internet that it was the vaccinations that took place in Brazil that's right. actually causing the microcephaly and maybe even the Guillain-Barre. Sometimes vaccines have been connected with uh, GBS, Guillain-Barre syndrome. Uh, as to the microcephaly, I don't know. There are lots of things that can cause microcephaly. Anything that will mutate uh, DNA or cause some sort of developmental problem uh, during the fetal development, that can lead to microcephaly. Uh, so th th making a strong case for a vaccine in either of those is very difficult. But one interesting thing I found out, it was the Tdap vaccine, mm -hmm. the tetanus, uh, diphtheria, and uh, pertussis that mm -hmm. was given to the pregnant women. Right. That vaccine was only tested that I could find one time on pregnant women. It is still, by our own government, categorized as a Category C vaccine, which means it is not recommended for pregnant women. And the one study I found indicated some major problems with, uh, uh, that were adverse side effects, severe adverse side effects, hmm. after giving pregnant women the Tdap vaccine. Another possibility is that DTAP and Tdap, mm -hmm. one is a booster, one is a primary um, uh, vaccine, that they may have been mixed up. There was a study showing, oh. we don't know this for sure, mm -hmm. but there was a study uh, uh, back in 2010, a report that was issued saying that this study indicated that it's not unusual for hospitals and vaccination sites to mix them up. One is given to pregnant mothers, another mm -hmm. is given to children 11 and above. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's we'll, we'll have to see. And again, time will tell. The big meeting is going to take place in March. We'll see what happens. And in fact, it wouldn't surprise me if somehow that de meeting date is moved up to sometime in February if we continue to see a lot of hyperbole about this story. Because when we look at what happened with Ebola, yes. and considering the, uh, well, frankly, finger pointing and blame game that's taken place since Ebola officially has been declared ended, even though it's still going on right. uh, in, in a minor way uh, and probably is now endemic in West Africa. Um, the name calling and, and the, the blame game that was taking place over Ebola, I think that many in governmental positions with the health organizations are trying to avoid that. Get out ahead of it, even if it means overreacting. Yeah. In order yeah. to avoid being culpable, responsible, or uh, <laughs> avoid getting well, sued. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In fact, you know, there are those who, there, there was a, uh, an article, I would have to go and find it here, it's about Venezuela, and uh, a doctor was actually questioning whether or not the report of numbers, uh, Zika numbers in Venezuela is not being underreported by a factor of 100. Oh, Instead of 4,000 cases, it's 400,000 cases is what this person, local doctors actually, this is uh, uh, the doctor who was writing the report, mm -hmm. had contacted local doctors in Venezuela. And they say that the numbers are so underreported that it could be that there are actually a million cases of Zika in that, that 
the more cases you get, mm -hmm. the more cases you will get because you have a blood pool of virus that is provided for the mosquitoes. Right. That's why it's of concern to the United States and other countries that don't currently have a Zika epidemic going on. The more people who travel to those countries, mm -hmm. Rio de Janeiro, Olympics, the Olympics, get ready to go right. on. Exactly. If you travel there and you come back, you are very likely, unless you slather yourself in some sort of... Mm -hmm. uh, of uh, uh, product Ant, that's yeah. got anti-skeeter, anti-skeeter yeah. anti Anti-skeeter. Anti <laughs> Use Gilbert, anti-skeeter. Uh, but seriously, if they do, and, and we also now know, or at least it appears, that it could be, in some cases, sexually transmitted. Yes. So again, Rio de Janeiro, lots of young people going down to party. Yep, yep. Yeah, it could be really interesting to see what happens this summer. Ultimately, uh, one of the, the uh, demographics that's really going to take a hit in South America, at least, are the Catholics. They're being yeah. told you can't have kids for two years. Right, and um, there was a story that came out earlier this week that was interesting because it is not something that as a Protestant I would normally think about, but that the uh, Roman Catholic Church might rethink its position on birth control given the situation and the fact that uh, they are establishing cases now of sexually transmitted Zika. Well, in fact, there's a women's group that does offshore abortions. And they volunteered to do they these. They volunteered no to yeah. do these for the pe the women in Brazil. The reason they're offshore is because that gets around countries' laws. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's it, it's tragic uh, because the, the uh, for for any parent who's who's got a child that's sick, mm -hmm. uh, it, it is it is heart rending, uh, and and to have a child born without the proper amount of brain tissue because yes. of whatever whatever the cause is is. It can be devastating. And, and apparently but, it's also causing blindness and other issues. These, right. these children, they're going to need a lot of care, yeah. a lot of health care. Uh, this is something Brazil is really worried about. Uh, the president of Brazil has gone to Congress and asked them to approve a new tax hike so mm. that they can help to pay for these things, not only the mosquito uh, um, eradication. eradication, thank you, but also the health care that's going to be needed mm -hmm. to take care of Zika victims and also microcephaly. And they've been using this also as justification for Brazilian police and armed uh, yes. troops to go into homes forcibly if they, won't, if they aren't allowed. Exactly, which to... you have to ask yourself, why do you have to go inside the home to check for mosquitoes? Yeah, yeah. That, that, you can that do that around the house. Yeah. But summarizing, uh, they still have not firmly established the link between Zika and microcephaly. There may be other causes. Yet the World Health Organization this past Monday declared a global health emergency. Yes. Based on this virus. And so this is going to be in the news for quite some time. It will be. And uh, many, I know that there are a lot of people out there that are jumping out and they're making, you know, declar de declaratory statements saying, we know it is this, this, and this. We don't. Yeah. We really don't know anything yet, so so hold off. But please, if you're planning on going to the Olympics, please slather up and and you know, <laughs> don't don't be engaging in activities that. Yeah, yeah. It's um, well, this is again just another reminder that here on Earth we're not promised even another day, and no, so we, we need to make sure that we are prepared for. We what do. comes after? We do, yeah. and we need to really pray for the people down in South America that are affected by this, because the women, if they are, if they have believe that they have Zika, they may be terrified mm -hmm. that they may be carrying a child with microcephaly, or they give birth to a child and not realize, because you don't always know you have it. The symptoms of Zika are sometimes so mild, right. you just think you have a mild case of the flu, or you just feel nothing. So uh, it. These are people who genuinely need the love of Christ and they need us to pray for them because any mother, and I applaud any mother, any family that takes and raises a microcephalic child, this is a huge uh, uh, show of love, mm -hmm. of Christ's unconditional love. And I know that there are many who will say, well, you know, that child's not going to have much of a life. Let's just... Yeah. That's not a choice we should be making. Absolutely. L human life is sacred. And this is why we, we talked about this. This is why we feel so passionately about, uh, well, the documentary film Inhuman and the transhumanist movement. Yes. And circling back to the mention at the beginning of the program about the uh, decision of the United Kingdom to allow researchers to begin editing the genes 
in human embryos. But what is unspoken in that statement is that these embryos are created and then destroyed. Exactly. And we're told, oh no, we're not going to allow these to develop after seven days. Well, what that means is they are creating human life specifically to experiment on that, those lives exactly. and then destroy them again. And if, if to God a fertilized egg is life, then that is life that they are playing with. Absolutely. Hard to predict where this is going to go because again, we're not seeing all of the, uh, the cards here as to no. what, what is really responsible for this, what, what appears to be a, a, an epidemic of microcephalic births. Uh, is it this virus? Is it something else? Is it just that the numbers are wrong? And if the numbers are wrong, and this is not an unusual number of microcephalic births in Brazil, then why is it being trumpeted? Why, why are we being warned that there is a pandemic looming that the World Health Organization, the United Nations, needs to get out in front of the CDC? Is, you know, there are nations down there warning women, don't get pregnant for two years. What, what is behind all of this? And yeah. we honestly don't know the answers to Ultimately, those questions. Ultimately, that's the big question. And of course, another story we're seeing is that uh, vaccines yeah. are being developed. Right. And interestingly enough, GlaxoSmithKline and Sanofi Pasteur, who are two companies that make DTaP and Tdap, yep. um, are also saying that they have vaccines in the works. Uh, there's an interesting graphic that I'm going to give to you and we can put it up that is shows the research that you can find at PubMed, the site that I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. Um, it shows, if you put in the search term Zika, the number of research articles that are fetched over a period of years from mm -hmm. 1947 through 2015, or January 2016, I should say, and it goes practically nothing to woo Yeah. in 2014. Well, again, um, I tend not to jump to the conspiratorial conclusion at first, but it's hard not to ask some questions about what's going on with the yeah. Zika virus and the sudden spike in uh, warnings about it and uh, because the, the numbers, the information just doesn't seem to, to, to mesh here. It doesn't no. seem to track. And maybe it's just that I'm old enough to realize that there are that... Uh, That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> we'll, we'll put that on screen. Uh, there are motives other than uh, the public good that often direct the actions of those uh, in power. Um, Tuesday, we're going to talk about the program coming up Tuesday. We just had a couple of uh, wonderful uh, programs with uh, Dr. Michael Heiser, but this coming Tuesday, we introduce people to a couple of new members of the uh, Skywatch TV team, mm -hmm. including Josh Peck, who viewers and you're probably, probably going, where is he? Yes, well, it, Josh is actually busy working on developing his new program called Into the Multiverse with sure. Josh Peck. He just barely comes on with us, and then he suddenly says, no, I want my own show. <laughs> 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 you guys are crazy. I'm getting out of here. That's right. No, his own show has been in the plans for a while, and, and it's going to be incredible. Yes, so look for that very soon. It's just some of the exclusive, more exclusive content that you get at the Skywatch TV website, skywatchtv.com. Uh, coming soon, Josh Peck, Into the Multiverse. One more thing we need to let you know, just a warning. February 17th is the deadline. If you want to get 20% off Wise Foods, mm -hmm. you got to do it before uh, the 17th, I want to make sure that that amount is correct. Let yes, me look 20% at... is correct. Uh, Wise Food, of course, is... Uh... Yep, 20% off Wise Foods. These are wonderful foods that have a very long shelf life, right. and they're delicious. And being prepared is, is, uh, is, well, it's biblical, and it's just prudent, just is smart. Is there a better Valentine gift? Than, Show than being love prepared? to your family, love to your loved one by by showing you're prepared. Yep, so that 20% uh, off sale, you'll, you'll find the link to that at the top of the website at skywatchtv.com. Uh, that'll take you to the Skywatch TV store, which is, of course, skywatchtvstore.com. Boy, it's, 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 the, the time goes by so quickly. I, I uh, oh, know. We I'm... also need to tell people that uh, we, we appreciate the comments and the suggestions that you're yes, sending please. in. Yes, please. Please keep sending them. Sci Friday at skywatchtv.com. And we both get those, and depending on which one of us is uh, not busy at the time, we'll answer as quickly as we can. So we really appreciate that. Have a blessed weekend. Until next time, for Sharon Gilbert, I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV.